Fabian Galtier, Keith Wood lead their respective sides out into the sudden death quarterfinal. Listen to the crowd. This is a game of epic proportions tonight. There is no place for the faint hearted and no prize for coming second. Well, for that, there may be only 35,000 here tonight at Telsa Dome, but the crowd noise is sensational. There's uh, the great centre three quarter, Yortian. Hat trick on to in the World Cup. So into the huddle go the Irish. They know there is no prize for second tonight. They had to go through the drama and the trauma of losing by a point to Australia here last week. But the French side, the big question is, is this their biggest test so far in the World Cup of 2003? Their main side has been well rested after two weeks since this top team played a game. Yazian in the centres with Marsh and Galtier, their experienced captain. The Irish team led by the inspirational Keith Wood. Terrific light out with Kelly and O'Connell and back up of Easterby and the big man at number eight, Costello. And that man O'Driscoll holds the big key tonight in both attack and defence for this Irish side. Inspiration from him could be a turning point if Ireland are advanced from this quarter-final stage for the very first time in the history of the Rugby World Cup. The crowd now stands as one for the anthems of both countries. the cockles of your heart and so will Ireland.
what an atmosphere, what a match we're going to have. And these players, experience of both teams, on the bench. And Liebenberg is the man that has ousted Damien Trale in uh, the French lineup after his wonderful hat trick on Rugby World Cup debut against the United States. So this stage is electric. You can feel it. We hope that you enjoy it. Is this the last match for this champion halfback, Fabian Galtier? And his fourth World Cup campaign. He leads the French into battle tonight. They've had a marvellous record in World Cup rugby. Bordo, Brian O'Driscoll had his calf strapped on the ground here. I don't know if he's hurt on the way out, but was heavily strapped during the uh, anthems. Well, what a blow that would be to Ireland. Keith Wood could well be the last test match for him as well. He is the heart and soul of the Irish. Watch for him tonight. He will be everywhere. There's O'Driscoll, the champion centre three-quarter, 24 years of age, who made his debut against Australia at Ballymore 10 years ago. And Olivia Magna, champion player in the back row, 30-year-old, 69 caps, played in the 99 Rugby World Cup as well. And the referee, the 37-year-old from South Africa, Jonathan Kaplan, who officiates in his fourth World Cup match and his 16th international all-time. He'll be assisted today by Chris White of England and Nigel Williams on the uh, touchlines. And the television match official is an Australian in Stu Dickinson. Well, get ready. This will be a cracker of a quarter-final. Jonathan Kaplan checking with Fabian Galtier. He says on five. And the whistle sounds. And the quarter-final is underway. That's, uh, that's uh, Dempsey. That's Ireland now with Costello charging forward. The big number eight. Ireland lined out. Stringer. O'Gara. Or oh, solid hit in midfield. That's great defence. The ball has been knocked forward by Ireland. Now a chance. Galtier. Manya. They move it wide straight from the start. Marsh and Jalzian out there. And Dominici. Dominici knows his way to the try line. Two tries in 99, three already at the World Cup. Here's Benson, scored the opening try against the Scots. And Rougerie looking for space on the right. But it was Keith Wood that came across in desperate cover defence. Well, I can tell you this will be a sensational game. Jonathan Kaplan in the mood to see this game run. Both sides will go for it. The Irish believe in themselves. They believe they can win this game. The French... So much attacking power out there. And O'Connell there, big jumper for the Irish. Important line up. They've secured it. A great start for the Irish. Now Costello. You'll see a lot of the big number eight. Being heavily involved. Corrigan. Betson's very quickly onto Agara. But he got his kick in. Back it goes for Nicholas Brusk. And an angle kick for touch. Dempsey. Takes play eight metres short of the halfway. This will be a French throw to the line out. Well, speaking to Tony Darcy, the former Wallaby, about this Irish side, they know they have to try and eliminate the advantage this French type five have. They are supreme players. And that's where the Irish will be really directing their enthusiasm. Even as about to throw in. To the back they go. Good quality ball by the French. Michelin cut out pass. Rougerie from the right wing. This is wonderful stuff. The French have shown their intentions early. They are going to move this ball wide. Michelin again. Angling it away. This is space. Pressure on the fullback. Hannah Rodorki. Try time. Olivia Magna. What a great French try to start this quarter final. And he celebrates. So do the fans. It's 5 0 to France. What vision by Michelac. He saw Costello 
hanging out the side from the last play. He realised he had the speed in Harry Nadorki. Quick ball, he's had a look, open side, no one home. The big men couldn't get there. Harry Nadorki swooping on the ball, simple pain between the marsh and then the ever-present Manya over for a simple one, quick and easy. Well, they, they swept it down to the left-hand side, then open spaces out on the right. And there's that wonderful loose trio operating together with Marsh involved. And now the leading point scorer in the World Cup, Michelac, takes his tally to 80 at Rugby World Cup 2003. And France lead the quarter-final by 7-0. Well, it's great to see such a positive start from both sides. Munya, world class, is number seven. And he's figured in so many great, great French tries recently. So the big question, can Ireland come back after the early setback? They have been rocked in the opening minutes by a very enterprising French side who take them on down the middle. And they advance it up towards the halfway line. But Finally, the ball has been knocked forward, and the Irish, the Irish team breathes just a sigh of relief. Well, what a powerful performance uh, from the French so far. Roger you can Holt. see in the air from the tears in these players' eyes, yeah. this game is just on. Stringer, Costello off the back, but beautifully picked up by Fabian Galtier. He read it beautifully. So that's against uh, Easterby for killing the ball and put that down to the French scrum. Tremendous pressure up front, beautiful push, straight down the park. Costello having all the trouble in the world trying to take it out, and now they reef the ball and reef the rewards with a line out 15 metres from the line. Stu, after the early try, this is perfect field position, but look at the pressure from Galtier. Well, this is where they want to attack Ireland. They want to control the game in their tight five. They're a very well-oiled machine. Good line out, good scrum, great finishes. And great reward for a perfect start by the French. Now they'll try and roll it on the Irish again. The 15 metres out from the Irish try line. Repelled initially by the Irish. That's great, great play, but it's still mobile and going forward. Now a chance to free the backs. Michelac. Jalzian. Ball has been knocked back. Towed forward by the Irish. And it's into touch. It was uh, from inside the 22, so the kick will take play up about 15 metres outside the Irish 22. Well, I'm sure Shane Horgan would love to see that ball go further downfield, but the French just uh, the missed timing then on the kick, on the pass, and the ball sails out. But the pressure still being applied by this French pack. Number five at the back there is Jérôme Thion for the French. Now taken up by Marconet, the big tight head prop. That's Jalzian. Hat-trick of tries in the opening World Cup match, showing wonderful strength and drive. Terrific leg drive by the big centre. Now Michelac, the playmaker, that pass looked forward, and it's been knocked forward by Jean-Jacques Krenka. And the Irish now will try and work it outside their own 22. O'Gara stepping. Stringer arrives at the breakdown, but poor ball. Oh, tremendous work by Betson, then yes. straight on to O'Gara, and the and referee Jonathan Kaplan going back for the uh, knock on. Turn out. Yes, scrum green. Pass forward. Betson, fantastic work, straight out of the top, excellent tackle, plays it very wide, Betson. So, the scoreline reflecting the enterprising start by the French, a terrific try by Olivia Magna. Jonathan Kaplan giving Reggie Corrigan a little bit of advice in the scrum on his binding, making sure he keeps it up. But O'Gara still on the ground after copying a little bit of treatment from the breakaway surge. Betson came over the top. Fantastic cover defence. It looked like O'Gara could have got away. 
But that's what breakaways do, chop them down at full flight. So it's Beston, born in Cameroon. And tonight playing his 35th international. He scored two tries in his run on debut. Coming off the, uh, the bench against Italy. And then he came on for his first game against Fiji where he scored the double. And he's also scored one try already at the Rugby World Cup 2003. So this is worrying times for the Irish. Thank you. With Ronan O'Gara still down injured. But uh, they have a worthy replacement in David Humphreys. Who has 59 caps to his credit. Well, the Irish are still singing, but they have been rocked to the rafters early. And there's O'Gara. Key player. It's good enterprise for O'Gara to try and run that ball out from the Irish line. Oh, another big scrum by the French. They're putting on tremendous pressure at the set pace. O'Driscoll. Back for Nicholas Brusque. Linking up with the big lock forward in Fabian Palus. Very experienced lock of the French side. That's the 22 metre line. They're making easy yards, the French. Michelac goes to the line. Here's Betson. Rougerie on the outside. Showing the touch line. Put in the touch, no try. Well, that was great cover from the Irish that time round, but the French just pushing the ball wide. Serge Betson has been just lurking out there all night. He's got beautiful hands. Sends Rougerie down the line here, but watch the defence come across. And that foot, right foot on the line, that's out. What a call from the touch judge. Yes, that Nigel was a hair's Williams, breath in it, wasn't it? But he got it right. And the Irish are still down to 14 men with Agar off to the sideline. Who will slip into 5-8? Back it goes for Dempsey. And he only gains about 15 metres. And they're still working on Agar on the far side. He's about to come onto the field. So Ireland back to their full complement. Fabian Palouse, there's Agara. He made a great run, but uh, he was thumped. Now, watch the power of this French pack. They roll it forward again. And again, terrific stuff by the Irish. Now they go right. And a chance for the, the French again. Well, on attack, ill-disciplined play by the French at the breakdown. Not staying on their feet. Line-out options for the French are really frightening. Harry North the key at the back has been reigning supreme. Tion Palouse. Just plenty of opportunity there. Manya. So Ireland now a chance to take some pressure off as Ronan O'Gara looks to clear. But again with the Irish with their backs on the ropes. Who comes forward but their captain Keith Wood. Hooker on hooker takes a great tackle. Rolls if and there's over onto the Irish side as they should do in the tackle and the only thing Magna could do was come in over the top to try and regain the ball O'Connell off the front now Wood loves to run with ball in hand Keith Wood he scored four tries in the match against the USA in 1999 at the World Cup which was a sensational performance by a hooker great Involved at the breakdown by both teams, and Ireland have the benefit of the put into the ensuing scrum. No easy yards for the Irish, the, the French just coming through low, hard, and find the pressure of the breakdown. Stringer has to clear the ball quicker. Wait, there's Scrummy. Scrummy out! Nine! Galtier putting pressure on. Now O'Gara. Low angling kick away for Brusk, but the angle. And the trajectory of the ball too good, and it turns the French around. And Ireland are in French territory, a rare occasion in this first half so far. You're right, Porto, it is a rare occasion. Limited ball, they've got to use this ball, they've got to try and get some points quickly, get some confidence up. They just can't defend all night. Huge Irish support here at Telstradam. Adam Adorkey, the number eight. He and Simon Taylor. Just fantastic exponents of their skill and trade. Now a dart from Galtier, 34 years of age, but still fleet of foot. 
the French captain. Now Michelac put under pressure, and that's spun off the side of the boot. Brugerie had a chance for Marsh. What a tackle from O'Driscoll. And oh, recovers. Splendid play. That's why they say he's the best number 13 in the world. Brian O'Driscoll. Tremendous play. Stu Wilson, the crowd loved every minute of that. Well, yet again, it's uh, Michelet that gets them down there with the boot. Empty spaces. Oh, it has. It's just, just gone over. Just but a su superstar play by O'Driscoll. Rougerie is not a, uh, a, a slump when he runs running out there. He's fast and O'Driscoll made up five metres on him. But Simon, it was the way in which he did it. Full flight, diving, full through. We see Michelak wouldn't be a best kick. It just came off and bounced the right way. But O'Driscoll does the tackle, gets to his feet, is allowed to play at the ball, sets it up, not only saves a try, got a bit of claret coming from his forehead, doesn't only save the try, but then gets the penalty and again gets the Irish out of trouble. So we have an injury problem at the front here for the French. It appears to be Marconet in 7 0 to France over Ireland. This is copy book. The head position. That's where he got the knock. And then he got to his feet. Now, once you're in your feet, you're allowed to play at the ball, and that's what O'Driscoll did. Mags takes it to midfield. Turn out the ball and a chance to strike back by the French. Marsh got it away for Dominici. And there's a wall of green defence there. Betson got it to Fabian Galtier. And that's Jean-Jacques Klinker, the oldest player in the French squad. Second oldest to Fabien Galtier. And now Olivia Magna, the try scorer. Phases building for the French. Adonadorki slips. Wood is in there. Trying to steal it. It's an Irish ball. Turnover ball for Ireland. And it all came from Adonadorki losing his footing. Now Michelac will put it back into the corner. But the ball bounces infield. Gavin Gervin Dempsey playing in his 43rd international tonight for Ireland. Takes play outside the 22. Uh, Michelac, he, he got back and covered that uh, position for the French. The fullback Bruce was caught up. Michelac back straight away. It's just such great professionalism from this French team. Ibanez's yeah. jumper has uh, opened up. Rafael Ibanez. 70th captain Ive charges upfield. Tion arrived now. Fabian Galtier and Betson. This back row of France is very proficient. They've got a great playmaker in Michelac at 10. There he is handling for the second time. The pass has gone astray. Horgan is out there putting pressure on Dominici. Betson in there again. Like all good back rowers should be. Now, Georgian, Galtier, little pass off the hip, and I think it went forward. And the referee threw the touchdowns on this side. Jean-Jacques Pecker gets to his feet. And the French are very deliberate. They know they've got a very good set pattern. They want the tight five just to get control of this match, allowing their loose fours to roam around with Betson out in the midfield, out wide. Very simple game plan, get control of the game, and they certainly have. Stringer, tonight becomes the most capped Irish halfback of all time. Pass of Michael Bradley's tally of 40 test matches, Stringer tonight involved in his 41st. It's amazing at ground level down here when the, the Irish defence is just watching the, the French runners for coming at them, they don't know where they're coming from. There's forwards, there's backs, there's back rowers everywhere. 
There's just no set pattern to this French attack out there, and it makes defence very Six. tough. Both finalists in 87 to 99, they reached the quarters in 91 and won the playoff for third and fourth in 95. The best credential side for the Northern Hemisphere, if Even Rugby World Cup air. history is any indication. Can they the go air. the one step further in 2003? Their Final form so far in the tournament, in the, in the pool matches, suggests they are one of the top sides. Tonight though, they saw it as their first real test hit out in the World Cup so far and they've started brilliantly. John Hayes penalised there for trying to take Manya out in the air. The penalty was because Manya was in the air and Hayes has had a go at him while his feet were off the ground. You must let the man with the ball come to the ground first before you attack him. Now again, simple mistake putting France hot on attack. Tion won it at the front. Now Dominici in for the left wing. Terrific defence there by the Irish in the form of the tight head Hayes. Now Galtier, but just manhandled by O'Connell. Well, full marks for the Irish. Full marks for that man, Paul O'Connell, the 24-year-old Munsterman. Yeah, Galtier was looking for a run at the end, got nothing, had to go on his own, got swamped by big big Irish defence and a turnover for the scrum it's their first mistake tonight in the fringes isn't Galtier putting tremendous pressure on Costello that all starts because this French scrum is working at such a unit they're really giving a lesson to the Irish so far it's a hard night at the office in that front row for the Irish Louis Galtier is small Costello big but he's in there like a terrier 85 kilos on 118. The difference in their frame. Now O'Gara. Chancellor O'Driscoll. Oh, the pass just went astray and O'Driscoll toting forward. But again, just breaking down. Gervin, Dempsey. Well, John, John Kelly. Yeah, John Kelly ran, ran the wrong line then. He should have stayed wide. It was a good overlap there, O'Driscoll. Beautiful break from him. But Kelly should have stayed wide. He comes in here. That was the wrong move. Rougerie was in on O'Driscoll. That's the first time the ball's been given to me in the Irish backs. Nice, good, straight running. Even then, straight at the line out. Again, the strength of the French pack. Galtier, clever little kick over the top. It's probably gone too far, and so this will be marked. And the fullback in that situation is allowed to call for the mark, and he gets the free kick. He played on. In fact, it was Kelly. He realised he could come to the 22, and he was forced to kick it, and only made five or six metres. Well, a huge uh, follow through by Rougerie. He can do that, and uh, Kelly should have kept on going. The kick has got them nowhere. Manya plays on quickly. Rafael Ibanez got across the advantage line. This is a great opportunity now for the French. They'll move it wide through Michelac. He's got great skills. Georgia, great tackle coming in from Horgan. And it breaks down out wide. He read it beautifully from the right wing. He's a likely lad, 193 Sorry. centimetres and 102 kilograms. And he came off his wing in great defence. Terrific work by Horgan. My call, don't go early, please. Crush and hold, no ball. French backs lined out very deep. That's a feature of their play. And watch for Dominici. From the side, releasing the binding. Eight and seven. Well, the two back rowers, Costello and Keith Gleason. Left that uh, far too early and have been penalised. They must stay attached to the scrum finishers. Look at Costello. Only holding on by the hands. He didn't have a shoulder attached to the, the side of the scrum. 
two, very, they've, they've given away two very soft penalties, Dan, particularly when they had the numbers in the lineup. They had eight when they should have had seven. Soft penalties, and the way this guy kicks. Okay. Yes, he's mentioned the leading point scorer, 80 points so far in the World Cup. Two tries, 14 goals, 13 penalty goals, and a drop goal. It's been a great tally. Keith Wood can only look on as Frederick Michelac hopes to chalk double figures for the French. And he's done it. It's 10 0 to France. French so far have had a mountain of possession. Well, the French have had a mountain of possession but only scored 10 points so far. They started like a train but the Irish with their defence have been smothering them and slowing the play down. That's Betson. Was the ball knocked forward by Palouse. Michelac onto the right foot. Torpedo punt taken by Kelly and turned for the fullback Dempsey. Now Horgan, the big strapping winger for Ireland. He's got a ton of pace. Picked up and driven forward. Uh, that is being paid to Ireland. And the penalty forthcoming. Beautiful back row play there by Keith Gleason. There for the pick up when the ball was spilt. Horgan really wanting to have a crack at this French defence. Now Algara will drive it up towards the 22. And now Ireland with probably their best chance to attack so far. A very likely land. Look at the great work there by Gleeson. Born in Dublin, but played most of his rugby in Australia before being capped a couple of years ago against Wales. One of the Australian back rowers that got away, I think the general consensus in Australia that he was too small to play for the Wallabies. And once again he's called Arnold home. Now they drive it inside the 22. And Costello driven into touch. The big number eight, 118 kilos. And look who was there, Galtier comes across. He's just an inspiring captain, just leg drive. And Dominique, the two small men in the French team. Galtier. Nicolas Brusque. Well, that's a great touch finder by the French fullback. Ireland just needs some hope. They just need a stiff sniff of some points here to get them back in the game. They've got a huge French uh, Irish contingent here just willing them on. O'Connell. East to be one at the back. Swarming defence by the French. No, 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 no. Stringer. O'Connell. Ball becomes available again for Ireland. French are up so quickly. Here's Dempsey. Double team by the outside backs of France. Just watch the pace of this French defence. They are attacking the Irish defensively. They are up in their faces. Mags. One down low, one up high. Stringer again. Goes wide. O'Gara. Look at that defence. Double teaming again. There's nowhere for the Irish to go. Well, you can throw a blanket over the Irish at the moment. They haven't got a man over halfway across the field. They've got one person in Horgan. And now they just keep wanting to bash it up the centre. The French, you've got to give them respect. Now they go wide. Adriscoll with a kick in behind the defence. Horgan is flying. So too is Dominici. Great result for the Irish. They've got the position. You're right about that bunch attack out there. Very ordinary. But eventually the genius of the kick gives them the opportunity. Adriscoll again. How important 
is he to this team? Well, it takes out Driscoll to see the, the space in behind. He wrapped round and ran wide and then put a beautifully weighted kick through. 25 minutes gone first half. Can the Irish pull some points back? They'll try and drive it if they don't come out the stringer. Now Horgan shows his bulk and strength. He's been very impressive so far. But that was against Easterby, not coming in behind the last man. And the penalty coming in from the side. And that's silly stuff by the Irish. Well, again, another soft penalty, David. They've done well. They haven't been down in this part of the territory for basically the whole half. And a soft penalty puts them back on halfway around the 10-metre mark. Line out show to France. Jonathan Kaplan is giving players latitude to release the ball. Hawk on this stage, he rolls back across again. He could have been penalised technically there, but Jonathan Kaplan, good refereeing, he's giving them some latitude. Notice how deliberate the French are at coming to this line out. Even as with the throw, up goes Palus. Now they go wide again. And that is into touch on the ball. So one of the rare mistakes of this tournament by Michelac. And they're going back to the crooked throw by the French. No advantage being forthcoming there. Yeah, there's no doubt that uh, we're seeing a targeting of Kelly on this wing. Rougerie, a much taller player. And Michelac. Really sending that ball through consistently onto this uh, commentary side. It's true, you notice that Kelly doesn't hug the touch line. He leaves a very big gap from where he stands to the touch line, and Mitchell has to pick that up. He stands very he's inside his man. In fact, he's probably making Tony Marsh at centre at the moment, but he's just hoping that the drift of fence of the inside centre and centres of Ireland will move it across. No, you didn't slip. The line you can see is the 10 metre line, it's in French territory. They lead by 10 to nil, opening try by Manya. The rest of the points coming from the conversion and the drop goal, that's great defence by Costello. It's over Cook too. And that's the correct decision, Nick. He was outside his 22, only just. And the ball, you cannot kick it out on the full if you're outside that 22 metre line. And, and as Bruce has kicked that, he's realised he's put a little bit too much oomph on it. His body language was trying to will it back in, curve it back in, but he knew he was out by a metre. And Ireland on the attack. Ogara, Mags. Oh, great play by Mags. Straight through the first line. Ogara. Easterby. Over the advantage line and beyond. Stringer nips away on the short side. Keith Wood goes past the advantage line as well. Now a chance for Ireland to spin it to the right. O'Gara, oh, undisciplined pass. Clever play, even as Betson, Dominici, he will have too much pace. Second try for the French. Fourth try in the World Cup for Dominici. Well, a mistake by Ireland, punished by the French. It's 15 to nil. That man, Dominici, the try scorer. There isn't much of him, but what it is, it looks like he runs scared. The Irish hot on attack, but it was that man, Manya. He picks up the crumbs inside to Ibanez. Again, the back row of Betson and then Dominici. They were looking for the fast man, and it was just a straight sprint to the line. And Horgan just didn't have the gas to keep up with him. Try time. It's all about reducing your errors. Ireland created. A huge area out wide. The loose force getting involved. This guy's got a huge amount of gas. And they will punish you if you cough up errors like that. That's too easy. And Munyer reminiscent of the semi-final in 99 against New Zealand, Stu. That just break out here. He's got so much speed, so much vision. Super player. But we spoke earlier about how the, the Irish are bunching up in their attack. And if they cough the ball up, this French side will punish you with quick turnover and down the other end of the park stuff. Frederick 
Michelac, 21 year old from Toulouse, has a magic right boot, and it's 17 0. The French celebrate in Melbourne. Betson did very, very well. You'll see the little push here from uh, Galtier putting Dominici in, in space. And he scores a wonderful French try. So two tries to the French in the opening 30 minutes. Well, that ball went uh, forward off French hands first, so it will be an Irish feed. And coming into the uh, last 10 minutes of this first half, desperate, desperate for points. O'Driscoll, can he work some magic? Scrub feed by Arvin. Look at the pressure Galtier putting on Stringer. Now O'Gara. O'Driscoll. Beautiful play, O'Gara. And Betson, what great defence. This blind side flanker. Now they go again, O'Driscoll just wants to get his hands on the football for Ireland. He knows that he can penetrate out wide. And again, at the breakdown, the Irish are penalised. Great tackle there by Tony Marsh on O'Driscoll. That's one for one. What a great story this is, Stu. Outstanding. Had testicular cancer, he went through chemo and radiation back in the early part of the year and he's back playing in a Rugby World Cup and hoping to play in the final in two weeks time. Betson has been outstanding, the headgear back rower for France. But more importantly for Marsh was the, the confidence that Laporte put in him, the coach, the French coach saying you are good, I know you will get back from this and you will play in the World Cup and so he has. Great inspiration, Tony Marsh, the New Zealand board centre for France. Now Galtier takes another snipe of this Irish defence. Beautiful playback on the inside. A chance again. Cutting the door game. Third French try. Are they bound for the semi-finals? The fans in the stadium say, I think we're on our way. Allez les Bleus, 22-0 to France. Harry Nadorki, 23 years of age, the snipe by Galtier. He goes to the ground, there's no one in there. It's popped up by the big man Cranker, who then goes to ground again, looks for support. Harry Nadorki is there, 23 years of age, a fantastic athlete, one of the greats of the future for France, if not already. And he out sprints them all to the line to go over untouched. Look at him, raises the finger to the ground. On there. Michelac to make it 24-0. He'll play a great role in the future games of this World Cup. 24-0 to France. Well, French supporters, they couldn't be happier with this first half. It's just, just been a steamrolling skillful display by the French. Well, still a lot of people came here thinking that a surprise might have been on tonight, that this French side hadn't really been tested, but gee, they've served notice here tonight that they are very serious contenders for the William Webb Ellis Trophy. Well, I haven't been surprised with this French outfit. They've been very smooth. They've been so composed in this tournament. They haven't panicked. They're very well disciplined. And they're playing the game, the same game that I saw them when they opened up their game against Fiji in the, in the first round of their pool play. They're clinical, they're ruthless, their big men can run, they've got great touches, they can finish, and every opportunity they've got to score, unlike what we saw in the All Blacks last night, tonight, they've made points on the board count. And the longer they go in this tournament, it's a great reward for Fabian Galtier, their captain. He didn't start as the number one scrum half in two or three of the World Cup campaigns that he's played in. But after being named the IRB Player of the Year last year, he comes as their number one halfback and captain. And he's done a sterling job. He was put under pressure last week. And through all that, he stayed so composed. He's a great leader. 
and he's done a terrific job out there tonight for France. Well, so much pressure being applied in the breakdown by the French. The Irish are giving away penalties there very freely. They've got to stay on their feet. Up goes Vanya. Good service by Galtier. And a good break by Jolzian. They move right again. Even the tight five are so involved. Tight head props, loose head props. Now the back row of Benson pops it up. Great defence, Keith Wood. Needs to be. Gang tackle, hit Benson. Up she goes. Now Costello takes on the small frame of Michelac and like good fly halves impeded him and then got away from the breakdown. And the kick by O'Driscoll takes play to 10 metres short of halfway. You can see O'Driscoll, he didn't want to kick that ball but he knows just the pressure is there. He's booted it downfield and shaking his head because he just feels the pressure of this French defence. They're all over him. What a great fill-up this will be for French rugby if the side can make it all the way to the final because they are destined to host the 2007 Rugby World Cup. Galtier, even on the back foot, gives it to Michelac. And again, Kelly in very, very much in field, which has freed Rougerie up on the right-hand side again. Now they've got a chance to go left and go wide. Brusque. Got the ball away. Dominici was picked off in a great tackle by Easterby. Now Michelac. Ball beats him into touch. The flare of the French. Ireland up offside. Advantage wasn't forthcoming. Penalty France. Chance for more points before half time. Well, I hope that um, Jonathan Kaplan keeps having a look at the French back line too because both defensive screens out wider using the banana defence. The outside backs are coming up very quick. Now he, has, he, he pinged the island on that, at that occasion. I just hope he's a bit even. You just notice out wide, see how the backs when actual back was in the midfield. He said it was out wide. Well, I don't think that man was offside. Rougere, he's down injured here. Driscoll hit him high. Getting some attention to his to his nose and also to his uh, neck. The man they call the Blonde Lomu. Not quite as devastating as the man we saw in 95 and 99, Stu. He's got a few tracks to cut before he gets to that, that stage. Now, Michelac. He's been really on song with that boot tonight. 100% record, but he keeps intact. 27 0 to France. <laughs> This is where Ireland have to put their hand up. They have to stand and deliver now. Less than two minutes from half time. They need to put points on, put points on before this break. Stringer, Ogara, Dempsey. Ten minutes inside French territory. Costello. And again, the French, because they're aggressive at the breakdown, are making this ball for the Irish pedestrian. Yeah, they're so aggressive in the defensive technique. They are racing up and getting in the face of the Irish. Cricker on that occasion, in on the ball, didn't release. Yes. Ireland have no, much, no choice but to go for touch. They've got to go for seven points. Well, France beat Ireland 44-5 to back in 2002, and that obviously is sticking in the core of uh, Ireland. They don't want a repeat of that particular performance here in a Rugby World Cup quarter-final. Just before that, Fabian Gauto, the captain, gave the um, Brinker a big word saying discipline, keep it. That's the first penalty. 
Costello was picked off at the breakdown before getting across the advantage line. That's Hayes. Stringer. O'Gara. Forward pass. That was an absolute forward pass from O'Driscoll. Undetected by referee or touchdowns. Ireland play on with ball in hand. Stringer barking at the heels of the Irish pack. Morgan has come in from right wing looking for work. But this French defence is like a brick wall. Mags. And they back for O'Connell. They won't get through there if they got, they've got to run onto the ball. That's handing too flat. Now Gleeson. Morgan. Benson came in cover. Just like you'd expect from a world class back rower. Ball kept in play, but finally the body of Costello still attempts the ball. Goes over the touchline, the last play of the first 40 minutes. It's been all France. Three tries to nil. Backed up by a 100% record by Michelac with the boot. They lead the quarter final by 27 points to nil here at the Telstra Dome in Melbourne. Well, reason for the French to celebrate that the Irish are still smiling, but a scoreline that reflects dominance by the French in the first 40 minutes. They've scored three tries to nil. Tries to Kamania, Dominici and Hadadorki. Michelac, a 12-point haul. With the lead inspiration of someone like Keith Wood and O'Driscoll out wide to bring this Irish side back into this quarter-final. The Irish have never advanced past the quarter-final stage of previous World Cups, but the French certainly have a very impressive record. 3-1 going into this quarter-final in 2003. Very impressive performance by the French in that first 40 minutes. A 27 point advantage at half time. And they have continued their wonderful form of the pool matches where they achieve maximum points in their opening four matches. They have looked on fire in this quarter final here in Melbourne. They've looked very fresh and so they should be because the majority of the French side have had a couple of weeks off. Most of them didn't play their last pool game. So two weeks rest. And they will just continue what they've done in the first half. You know, their tight five have set a huge platform for their Lucys to roam around and support the backs. And they've punished the Irish side for every mistake they've coughed up. They have absolutely slaughtered them. Well, for the Irish at half time, Eddie 07 Sullivan might be looking for Wood and O'Driscoll, but he'll be needing divine intervention. Restarts by the French. O'Kelly claims it. That's the 22 metre line at the Irish end, you can see. Three tries to nil by the French. Totally dominant display. Oh, and that's the start that Ireland has won. The referee playing advantage. But the French will have the scrub feed. Well, no change for either side of the second half, and that man, Ronan O'Gara, was probably the most likely. Very heavy knock in the first half from Serge Betson, and just juggles that one as a look. So he's side immediately under pressure. Will we see... Well, the buy not correct on the... Loose head side by Corrigan. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. Carry on. And Fabien Galtier says to Michelac, come up and look for the three points. Reggio Corrigan puts his, slips his bind down. I don't really know if he was actually doing it on purpose or just trying to keep his balance, but the penalty was awarded. Twenty-one-year-old on the big stage. It's a Rugby World Cup time for Fred Eric Michelac. Sixteen metres in for a touch. Smooth as you like. And so first points in the second half go to the French. Thirty points to nil. 
Well, international rugby is all about eliminating and reducing errors. So easily a coughed up drop pass, three points down. Systematically and clinically, France just roll on. Ogara with the restart. And again, the French go out and look to just drive it downfield. Back for Dempsey. Leaking with Kelly. He wants to be charged down by the French. O'Driscoll. Beautiful pass, but it's been hushed into front, run into touch by the French. Knocked forward by Ireland, so the French will get the ball into the line out. Well, the Irish do need some luck. A little bit of luck came through then. Brian O'Driscoll, the uh, pass. Flick back inside to Hawk and didn't actually quite find the man. So the French again back to attack. And again, Corrigan has picked up on the loose head side and straight away Fabian Galtier went forward. Michelac arrived and now Munya. Knocked forward by the French. Now Stringer looking for the support, puts it to the boot. Back goes Nicolas Brusque. His French fullback was picked for the 99 Rugby World Cup, but didn't play, it didn't uh, actually get there. He withdrew through injury, but he's been in splendid form in 2003. Oh, that's a poor kick by the Irish. Turnover ball again, and, and a chance for the French to break out. And how good is Marconi going, the tight end prop? Recovers the ball and flicks. Now Horgan got the intercept there. Yeah, there was no uh, deliberate knockdown there. Horgan had his sight set on the trial line down this end of the field. Yes, the ruling there of the referee had deemed that that was a deliberate knockdown that would have been a penalty to the French. But you can see from the reaction from Horgan, he was looking for the genuine intercept. What a likely lad on the right wing. He's had limited opportunities. Late in that first half, he went looking for them. So Stringer. Hands the ball over for Fabian Galtier. Harina <laughs> Doggy through the legs. Georgian out wide. Nicholas Brusk spilt cold by Rougerie. Irish ball. 22 metre line. On defence. Costello. And O'Gara's trusty right boot drives play deep. With no advantage, the referee would come back to pack the scrum. Knocked forward by France. Ireland with the put into the scrum just outside their own quarter line. Well, virtually no handling mistakes in the first half from the French. The second half, Magna and Rougeret both have dropped the ball. Hold, hold. Good scrum by the French. Trying to disrupt the Irish ball. Keith Gleeson took it forward. In fact, it was Kelly. And Agara just forced to put it on the left foot. Aurelien Rougerie links up with Nicholas Brusque, who in turn tries to find Dominici. Man handled in defence, the little winger from France. Ibanez, Olivia Mania, Fabian Galtier. Irish defence tested again. Jean-Jacques Krenka. Look at the skills of the loose head prop. 103 kilograms of him. Stepping round Michelac. Jalzian. Out for Ibanez. Dominici, Fabian Gallier. Desperate defence by the Irish. The French have started the second half like they started the first. They'll go wide again. Michelac, wonderful hands. Benson arrives at the breakdown. Distinctive with that headgear. Ibanez, the veteran, the former captain, drives it forward. Now they've got numbers to the right. Michelac, Manya. Beautiful play by Olivia Manya. And finally, the oldest man in the French squad. 
scores his second try at this Rugby World Cup. Jean-Jacques Rinka. The French celebrate the fourth try by France. What a build-up by the French. Just repeated pressure. They kept hammering away, hammering away. And Granka, after sustained pressure, Michelet could see why that they had the opportunity. Manya does the speculator across to Harry Nadorki. He just flicks it inside to Granka, sitting there, catching a bit of wind. And he just scores it as if he scores one every day of the week. Nonchalantly puts it on the, on the ground for the try. Well, yet again, it's jerseys number seven and eight that are in blue are involved in this. And the final touches to the big man in the front row. You're right, Stu. Harry Nadorki, Manya and Betson. They are featuring so much out wide. Michelak. He's been superb tonight, as he has been right through this tournament. Takes his World Cup tally to 95. And the French to 37 to nil. Simon, would it be fair to say that the this tight five of France is doing a wonderful job setting up a great platform for Jersey six, seven, and eight to roam around the track? Or change for the Irish Humphreys on Agara's off. Restarts. Brusque flew high, took it brilliantly. Now a chance for France again. There's Marsh, driven over the touch line by some spirited Irish defence. Yeah, Kevin Maggs threw on Marsh. But again, it's the athletic ability of the French getting up high above the Irish. They're getting the ball back so many times from the kick throughs. Irish straight to the line out. They go to the back. And Kelly tried to get the pass out the back. But the throw was not straight, and the French elect to take the scrum. Replacement player on. David Humphrey is the fly half tonight, playing in his 60th international. The most capped Irish fly half of all time. On for O'Gara. Look at that platform by the French at that scrum. Big kick downfield. That goes Horgan. If he forces it inside that in goal area, play will restart with the 22 metre dropout. Michelak, what a World Cup he's had. You this might say a, a wasted kick from the French, but they're just continuing to apply the pressure to the Irish. The Irish now, the dropout from the 25, and the French will bring it back yet again. Humphreys hoists it high, bets it off his head, and Ireland get it back. Now David Humphreys. It's a kick down to Nicholas Brusk. He's been so safe in that custodian role for the French. Depth is opposite number took it well. The ball has been coughed up, taken by Kelly. Humphreys, Mags. Now Lying will Ireland advantage. come right? Penalty advantage. Humphreys again. This time goes short with the kick. Beautifully regathered by Humphreys. O'Driscoll's lost it forward. Number six. Now Sirs Betson is going to be a tackle, not using the arms. You must. Use the arms in a tackle. If we see the replay, the referee has got the number six for France for tackling and using the shoulder charge. Great little chip through there by Humphreys. Bit of variation, just trying to break this French defence, which has just been brutal. Just watch this. No, it was before the referee was playing advantage. But clever play by David Humphreys, variation by the Irish. Well, that's what they need. You know, that's the first little chip kick in behind the French defensive lines that they've done all year, all, see, uh, sorry, all game. 
They need just to vary the kicking game around a bit, put more height in the ball so they can go and claim it in the air. The long wipe has kicked downtown to basically done nothing for them all night. Marcus Horan has come on for Corrigan and Liebenberg has come on for Jorsey and here's a great break, Kevin Mads. Going for the try line, try to Ireland. Finally, the Irish have something to cheer about. And Kevin Maggs has come up with the try. He has been to two World Cups. It's his 14th try at Test Rugby, but his first ever at Rugby World Cup. The French line has been very, very good on the defence tonight. It was a wraparound from Keith Woods from the front of the lineup, and he found a hole. A couple of French loose scores of big reputations, he made a mockery of them. Shrapped the big winger off and said, too late. But what the important parts of Max did was he ran hard, he ran fast and he ran straight. Great angles. Humphreys hoisted high. 37-7, France over Ireland. Terrific ball from Paul O'Connell down to Keith Wood. Gave this man the room. Rougerie, nothing could do about it. Just powerful drive to the line. Restart by the French. It took the French 52 minutes to the line to be crossed. It was a splendid try by the number 12 from Ireland. He's been one of the real mainstays of this Irish side. And David Humphreys, quite amazing. France had just made the midfield change with uh, Georgian off and Liebenberg on. But it was closer to the action of the breakdown where the break was made, not out wide. Gauthier, out for Mania. He's had a terrific game. So too has Palouse and Hannah Nandorki, a brilliant back row for this French side. Now Galtier searching down that left-hand touch line, but he didn't touch on the ball. Well, Mugno, the, the ball control in. He had four Irish defenders on him. He turned, he got the ball back. Galtier upset with himself, not with his team. Well, is this the spark? Has Mags given him the spark to put, make the Irish Bring out a last massive, it would be a massive comeback, but can they do it? Humphreys pops it away towards halfway. What a great career this young fellow's had. I want to say young, he's 32. The most capped Irish fly half of all time. Serenity spot to O'Gara. He's only three points short of the all-time. World Cup point scoring record set by Ralph Keyes. France. Not straight, not straight, referee Kaplan judges. So Ireland now just into the French half. Just come closer, please. Can David Humphreys work some more magic? They've got their most experienced scrum combination of Stringer and Humphreys in the history of the game in Ireland. O'Driscoll cut out past Dempsey's in the line, Kelly. Good defence by Aurelia Rougeri on the far side for France. And Liebenberg was in there doing good work as well. Away, away, away. Good, heavy, strong rucking in there by the Irish. Now that's a great ruling from the referee. Now people out there don't know the game may think the boots on the player is a bit brutal. But he wouldn't get out of the way. It is legal if he's lying on the ball. And the Irish gave it to him. Now Tell was lying near the ball. He's fair game. A little bit of soft shoe shuffle shown on top of him to get him out of the way. There it is. Nothing wrong with the feet on the body to try and ruck the man out as long as the foot is going backwards. And more fool him, not getting out of there quicker now. If you stay there, you will feel the brunt of the Irish feet. And here comes the Irish. Chance. Straight through the line out. So close, the Irish. 
Will the ball come out? Costello. Ball copped up by Haradadorki. It's still an Irish ball. Humphreys through the dummy. O'Driscoll. Ball copped up. And Liebenberg kicks it away. Referee's got him offside there. Back to the try line. Another chance for Ireland. Will they take the scrum? Surely. Well, since Oren's come on, the scrum has stabilised. The last one they had was rock solid. They've got to go for it. It's all or nothing tonight for the Irish. There's nothing to be left in the tank. There is no tomorrow. This is sudden death rugby. Wood, they drive it forward. Stringer, through the hands of Humphreys, and he's copped it up. The pressure was mounting. That's had an Adorki, the number eight for France. A rare mistake by the Irish fly half. He'll be so angry with himself because they had a wonderful opportunity. Now Horgan, he will not go home wondering tonight. He's been looking for work all night. Dempsey, smashed in great defence by the French. Midway between the half, 22. Horgan again. Terrific, aggressive defence once again by France. Stringer, the pass has gone behind Humphreys. Now Kelly, and they've lost 10 or 12 metres. Now he must release. And again, look where the body of the, the French are. And the penalty's gone the other way. Well, the Irish against this French defence, you, you cannot show any weakness. You just have to run very, very hard at them. You show a chick of, of nerves or fear, they'll slash you in two. Whereas before we saw the penalty was, the, we saw that the rucking was with the foot going in the backward motion. This time with O'Connell, it was straight up and down. Penalty against him. It's 37-7 and a chance for France to go further ahead. LPA. A passion plea to his players. Keith Wood. Listening to the referee Kaplan. That man could not move away and he was gratuitous use of the group. Now it is. They're putting their legs in the ball as if they're rolling away. They're just slowing it down. Okay. The ball that's still, that's still up to me. That's still up to me. So, spirit of discussion with the Irish captain. And Jonathan Kaplan, that's the offender there, the number five. Dan, your thoughts? Well, he's sorry, he's saying that um, Galtier's got his legs over the ball, which he has quite rightly there, but it still says you're not allowed any downward motion with the ruck. Now Michelin. Oh, he has been superb tonight. Twenty-point haul, forty to seven for France. Keith Woods getting frustrated, talking to the referee, Jonathan Kaplan, saying. We've got to get them away from the ball so we can get quick phase ball, so we need to feed our backs quickly. Slow ball means it allows the French to get up in their face. Aerial skills by the French from the restart. So we're into the final quarter of the third quarter final. The last game at Rugby World Cup 2003 to be played here at the Telstra Dome in Melbourne. The heartland of Australian rules football but the Melbourne fans have supported this tournament magnificently. They had a great game here two weeks ago when England played Samoa. They had another cracker when Ireland played Australia. And they have thoroughly enjoyed watching the skills of the French tonight. And Keith Wood, he knows the time's ticking away. It could be the last time he plays on the international circuit. Humphreys steps. And again, three French defenders there to wrap up the Irish fly half. Keith Wood, he possesses all the skills. He can score tries. He can kick the ball. He can lead by example. What a great ornament of the game he's been. The Super kick. Sorry, Vorto. Just watch that past even is. And you're right. 
not only a, a fantastic player, inspiring captain, but he's such a, a great guy. You can't possibly tell me he meant that, to get it inches inside. He's a hooker, for goodness sake. They don't have those skills. Dan, some front rowers didn't have them, some did. Keith Woods got them. Well, he stole mine, and Dan, I want them back. Dan Crowley thought he had them. <laughs> you always said, though, that you were a back trapped in a forward's body, Dan, didn't you? God was cruel. Keith Wood carries on a tremendous family tradition. His father, Gordon, was also a Irish representative and Alliance tourist. And we wonder, are we seeing the last of this great Irish walking tonight? Now the kick downfield by Liebenberg. Safe hands of Dempsey, wonderful pass across field. That's freed up Kelly. Knocked on by Brusk. Ho Driscoll. Beat one. Lost it forward. Well, the referee said no knock on. Stringer. Horgan. His advantage still being played. Stringer again. Beautiful inside pass. Ireland have not given up. Horgan looking for play in centre field. Humphrey stolen by the French, but the referee was playing advantage for France being offside. And a chance for another penalty to Ireland. They will play on quickly through Stringer. Keith Wood crashes that body of the French defence. Now Humphreys, wide pass, O'Driscoll goes around that French defence. He's probing out wide, Brian O'Driscoll. And another penalty, will we see a yellow card? Continual infringements by the French. Tony Maas, super tackle on O'Driscoll. Cut him off from a try. Is that Driscoll getting across Marsh down? Even as is the one who's been penalised. Hands in there, the ball was already into a ruck situation. Let's listen to Jonathan Kaplan. No yellow card. That chastised the 30 year old Rafael Ibinez, the former French captain, who lost his captaincy to Palouse. Palouse in turn. Handed over the captaincy to Fabien Galtier, who is in his fourth World Cup here tonight. He's playing like a 21-year-old. He's led the French side superbly in this quarter-final. Now Ireland. Drive towards the French line. Stringer at the back there in nine. They wheel it left. The French are under pressure. Look at Galtier in there trying to stop Gleeson. Costello, clean out by the Irish. That should be a yellow card if it is. He's already just got a caution. A deliberate bit of uh, foul play there. He will go. He doesn't. He shouldn't even worry about talking to the referee. He should just walk. Yep, Put he, his bat under his arm and walk. He's gone. Three, like, Wrong guy. Sure. I'm about to make the decision. The histrionics are not helping the situation, so just calm down, right? Tion off for the French, gone to the blood bin. Olivier Bruze, the big man on for the French. Now, even as is the man, no right to play as that ball at all. Look at that, that is just unforgivable. He must go. Au revoir, Rafael Ibanez. He's so off the, the 74th penalty. minute of this game. So the French, if they scrum has been tackled, now, now need to bring a hooker on. With even as off. So on comes Olivia Bruze. And we'll also have the French hooker that must come on straight away. And that means that one of their players will have to leave as well. Olivia Miu will come on for the French and Munier comes off. So Yannick Bru from Toulouse.
made his debut against the Australians in 2001 in Marseille, takes his place in the middle of the French scrum. That is now minus Ibanez and Olivia Magna. Now what can Ireland do? Costello goes straight to the light man in Michelac. Stringer, Humphreys, the little kick in behind. No, did he get it down? That's try -try. I think he's got it down. Try it of Ireland. Brian O'Driscoll, clever play by Humphreys, good lead-up work by Costello, Ireland back scoring their second try. But with the French pack down to seven man, it was a good scrum by Ireland, giving the go ball for they wanted, a nudge in behind it, oh yeah that's classy. Well Humphreys saw the little gap, put it in behind, the only way you could breach the defence. And O'Driscoll just took his time, it looked like it was in slow motion, but one-handed just plucked it out of the air and whacks it down before the line. That is skill. And it was the second little nudge in behind the, the defensive line of France. Humphreys adds the extras. 40 points to 12, the French hold the dominance. Just all class, Brian O'Driscoll, Humphreys made a big difference coming on. Perfectly weighted kick. Just watch the concentration, the control. Brian O'Driscoll. And Stu, you'd relate to this being an outside back. That's 100 test points purely in tries by Brian O'Driscoll. His 20th try at Test Rugby. Well, he's world class and he showed it then. But it was that wonderful little, just that chip kick in behind the defensive lines of France. Not too big, just weighted nicely. That have caused a few problems for the boys in blue. Uh, Driscoll, 20 tries and four drop goals for 112 test points. But he really is a class act. It's a real pity a bigger crowd hasn't seen this wonderful game. Price is very high coming to the quarterfinals in a uh, non-rugby city like Melbourne. They're just relying primarily on the Irish, travelling Irish, local Irish and the French. The French have had a great record in the World Cup quarterfinals. They've played four. They've won three. Their only loss was to England in 91. But for the Irish, they have never progressed further than the quarterfinal stage. Twice beaten by Australia in 87 and 91. And that 91 clash is memorable. And again beaten by the French in 1995 but they have not given up here tonight. They trailed 27-0 at half-time. They have outscored France 14-13 in the second half. And we've still got plenty left to see yet. The wind is in the sails of the Irish. They want to rack up more points. He's in. Yannick Brew with the throw. That's Hayes, the tight head prop. And again, the lightweight fly half, Michelac, forced to defend. Well, good work, Betson over the top in the tackle, he caused the turnover. And taken forward by Olivia Bruce, But knocked on by the Irish at the breakdown. Point take. Point take. That's Marcus Horan. Well, I don't really think the French have actually taken the foot off the pedal. I just believe that. I thought Ireland looked very tired in that first half, but they've risen the game. The bars come up a bit, and they've frustrated the boys in blue. Out of the donkey and Galtier work it on the blind side with Brusque and Rougeri, but they have turned the ball over, line out Ball Island. We'll Look at him. Galtier, he just won't stop. He's leading the side to victory in the most emphatic way tonight. You see Vic uh, number 19, Eric Miller, has replaced Costello. That's a good move by Eddie O'Sullivan. So Miller, distinguished or just easily defined by a shock of blonde hair. You'll see at the back of the Irish line out. But a free kick, a short arm free kick to the Irish, which means they can't look for three points, but they can look for seven. Inside the 22, they line deep in attack to the left. Now they peel off to the right, try to commit Ireland to the breakdown. Galtier, Michelac, one of the rare mistakes. Toad through by Humphreys, that's a knock on to Ireland, uh, to France. The referee playing advantage, but none forthcoming. 
So back they'll come 15 to 20 metres for the scrum of the island feed. Oh, it's getting contagious out there. Errors after errors. They're losing a little bit of their composure. They've lost complete dis discipline when they were 33 points ahead and lost their, lost their hooker to Emmons in the bin. There's the first mistake Michelix made tonight. Remembering the French are playing one man down in their pack. And still putting pressure on that Irish scrub. Humphreys on the right foot. Takes play to the halfway and beyond. Well, if the Irish crowd was the uh, contest tonight, they've won it hands down. Huge noise, huge support here. Believers in their side. The French have just been too powerful. The Vinets have still got five minutes left in the bin. This is where the Irish have to capitalise and score points and score them quick. So Olivia Miu has come on as a replacement in the French side for the try scorer Jean Jacques Franca at Loosehead. Miu playing in his 14th international tonight. Relatively light but very technically strong on the Loosehead side for France. Look at them drive it forward. And like the good blue heeler dog there, Fabien Galtier. He's not adding weight, he's just adding inspiration. Now he wants the ball. And they've got the penalty instead. The big lock brought the play down, he collapsed the ball, Paul O'Connell. As the ball's being pushed forward, the opposition players cannot pull it to the ground. They have to stop it in its momentum. They cannot pull them to the ground or it is a penalty. And it was tremendous control by Aaron North, the key at the back there. Galtier providing the vision, but the drive was perfect. Just what? watch it. Ball tucked under the arm, you can see there. He must stay bound. And look at Galtier just giving that great direction in this French side. It's 40 points to 14. Frederick Nischelak, a chance to be the first player in 2003 to score 100 points at the Rugby World Cup. And he's done it brilliantly. He will play such a vital role. What a showdown of the kickers next week should England get over Ireland later tonight. And Johnny Wilkinson up against Frederick Nischelak. Well, he's outstanding for a 20-year-old player who occasionally or sometimes plays for his club. I think it's Toulouse, he plays at the scrum half. That number 10 jersey tonight, he has not missed a shot at goal. Outstanding performer. 23 point haul tonight for Michelac. Hoisted high again. We're into the final 10. In fact, eight minutes to go. The ball loose on the ground. Galtier wrapped up. Tried to get back to his feet. On your feet. On your feet. Secured ball by the French again. No halfback, so Aurelien Rougerie comes in. And Nicholas Brusque on the far on the right boot. Back goes David Humphreys. Caught in midfield by Dominici. But that's what the Irish have got to do now. There's no use kicking it. Throw it, protect your man, back him up. And that what does Hogan do? Kicks it. He's got to hold it. The man's built like a mountain. He can run like the wind. He's got to use those skills. Now he's one man. He doesn't know any other way than going straight ahead. And that's great defence by Michelac again. One thing that's impressed me about it, Stu, they have tested Michelac in defence tonight. He's only lightweight, he's only uh, 77 kilos, but his technique is very good. He hasn't flinched all night. You know, big heart, superb player, great future. Look at O'Driscoll, basketball skills as well, but it's been knocked forward. 
Here goes Liebenberg. That pass from Aurelian Ruggeri was picked up beautifully by Dominici, but the referee has ruled that it went forward. I can see the uh, tanks are running low on the RSN. Terrific break by Brian O'Driscoll. Looking for his men to come and support. There was a perfect opportunity to bust through the, uh, the French defence, but just running out of fuel. Here at the Telstra Dome in Melbourne, France lead the quarter-final 43 to 14. Thirty-three thousand fans here in Melbourne tonight. The last chance for the Melbourne fans to witness action in the Rugby World Cup 2003. They've seen a very powerful performance tonight. A performance by the French side that has served notice to the other sides still left in this World Cup tournament. That they are here on a mission. On this occasion, the French have knocked the ball forward at Betson, so the, ball, the scrum comes back and it'll be an Irish feed. They have another chance to try and get some points, get some respectability. I can't hear you. Well, Sin been over with Bruce staying on, at all. and Manya coming back onto the side of the scrum, so the French back to 15 players. And there will be a replacement because Patrick Tobacco from Stade Francais is about to come on for his 15th international. And what a performance by the number eight, the man he replaced, Imanal Underdog. He scored a terrific try in the first half. He was everywhere there tonight, leading the oh, look at that scrum by the French. They have just slaughtered the Irish. That's a big one. Even has had plenty of time to think about it in the sin bin. He's come on for vengeance. That is an emphatic statement by the French pack. And does that not hurt not only the body but the pride of the Irish? Especially a front row getting folded back over their second row. They are completely helpless when that happens and at the mercy of the opposition. Galtier has been wonderful tonight at the back of this French scrum that has dominated proceedings. 34 years of age, 63rd cap for his country. He was desperate tonight, Dan, to make sure that this wasn't going to be his last test for France. Well, they've, we've talked about how quietly, efficiently and effectively and clinically the French have gone about it. They've been the silent assassins so far of this tournament. And whether it's Ireland, whether or not it's Wales or England, they have put up the flag and said, beware, we're coming. Stu, for the, first, for the uh, fifth time in the tournament, they've scored four tries or more in each of the matches of the pool matches so their strike power is enormous it is but they'll take out of this game an area of discipline when Ireland have put a bit of pressure on in this in this last quarter they've made mistakes they folded but still their scrum goes ahead still they just keep this is the first time I've seen them in five games actually lose a little bit of composure and Simon you back up the try scoring potency with a brilliant goal kicker like the 21 year old from Toulouse, Frederick Michelac, you've got the complete outfit. Well, that's a warning to the English or the Welsh for next week that anywhere from 50 metres out, this guy can slot them. Across the advantage line again, the French go. Michelac, wonderful skills. Depth has been very sound tonight for Ireland in that 15 jersey. Behind the losing side, he's hardly made a mistake. Mags got it away for Humphreys, back for Mags again, that's good play. O'Driscoll, great body strength, great skills. Hum now they've turned it over at Fortune, now Betsy takes it away. The Dominici, the lightweight winger for France. And smashed to the ground, and into touch. Yannick Brew uh, coming back there, the reserve hooker for uh, France. General play, the ball's come back accidental, so that's what we saw play on. Splendid tackle by Keith Gleeson on Dominici. And we see Brusey far side, down injured, and that's what the French don't want now. 
in the last nine minutes of this game. They want to get out of it without injury. Good passing in between. O'Driscoll, he's going to keep fighting. Look at the brute strength he's got there, the power and the agility. Gets the one-handed pass away. Good skills all round by Easterby. Guy Easterby, that is. But again, it breaks down. Yeah, worry there for Olivia Bruce, eh? He played in the World Cup at 95 and 99 as well. And uh, tonight is equal the record of 15 games for the French at the World Cup by Abdelatif Benazzi. A man, Simon, that you have absolute respect for, Benazzi. One of the hard men, one of the hardest men ever in French rugby, Benazzi. Olivier Bruze leaves the field. And Pepito Elorga, the flying winger from Agen, is warming up on the touchline. Bruze has stayed on. And hooray for Jonathan Kaplan to come across, getting a little bit of a technical assistance with his microphone. Just holds the game up for a fraction. Kaplan, of course, refereed... Uh, Ireland against Romania, Scotland against USA, and England Samoa. And the England Samoa game and this one tonight, both at the Telstra Dome in Melbourne, have been the pick of the matches for the Melbourne fans. And Bruzé finally relents and comes off the field. Now Keith Wood, kick and chase again by the hooker. <laughs> this time it's in a touch on the fall. That's what you're more adept about for front row forwards, Dan. You stick to the basics, sometimes it helps. I can't remember you, me seeing you do that one. Rougere in his flanker at the back of the line out. Yannick Rue, that throw is not straight. Humphreys. Vardy's being played to the French. Betson. Liebenberg. Palouse goes over the top for the French. Now they go right hand side. Yannick Rue. Replacement hooker. For Ibedez, now Michelac steps, darts and probes, makes it available for his captain Fabien Galtier. Now Olivia Magna spent some time off the field when Ibedez was in the blood bin, in the sin bin. Galtier, Liebenberg. Just relentless pressure by the French. Turn over ball. But the referee will play the scrum feed to France. So into the final stages. Kept him off the ground well, the Irish. And who is that man underneath? But the ball avenger, Keith Wood. Minutes to go and he's still in there scrapping. As if it was his first test. And it could well be his last. A decision made by the Irish captain after this game tonight. A career that started back in 1994 against the Australians. Two Lions tours. The heart and soul of Irish rugby. Benson, Cameroon born, has had a superb game in the back row for Ireland and for France tonight. There's Manu at the breakdown again. Galtier. Michelac, Liebenberg, Wood affects the tackle, Palouse. Knocked forward by France. Let's get on your feet before you play. In fact, the penalty for not staying on the feet. Here goes Keith Wood. Kicking down inside French territory. Dominici soccer skills. That's brusque. And offside rule. So a chance for Ireland. Morgan. The guy used to be coming flying through. Ball available. Stringers off, needs to be on. Keith Wood puts the head down. Wouldn't he like to score his sixth World Cup try tonight in his final appearance? Now O'Driscoll's got space on the left-hand side. Couldn't get the pass away. They had numbers. 
Oh, great tackle around the bootlaces by Tobacco. East to me. Away with Humphreys. <laughs> Penalty. Chance now for the Irish. Humphreys. O'Driscoll held up. Try. Second try for Brian O'Driscoll. The third for the Irish. And they have avoided the humiliation of their worst defeat in the quarter-final of the World Cup. That came against France in 1995, a 24-point loss. Well, the tanks are not empty in the Irish team. There's still a bit of petrol. They're not giving up. That's the second try for him, and what a great player. What fantastic character from this Irish side. Never say die, and a Driscoll their best player, possibly the best centre in the world, scores two to nine. Eddie O'Sullivan, he's made a huge impact on this Irish side. And David Humphreys becomes the highest point scorer for Ireland in World Cup Rugby, beating Ralph Key's record of 68 points. In the end, a 22-point loss by Ireland, a farewell for that man in picture. Triumph for the experienced Captain Galtier. World Rugby says, Keith Wood, thanks for some memories that's lasted nine years. He's been a superb player for the Irish. Tonight, they just couldn't live up to it. They trailed by 27-0. In the end, they were defeated by 43-21, to although they outscored France 21-16 in the second half. 43-21, France go through to the World Cup semi-final. Well, the French, they put everything they could into this game, and it came off with dividends. The silent assassins roll on to the semi-final. You're right, Dan, just a uh, tremendous performance, especially in the first half, just blew the Irish away. And this was a very committed Irish side. They weren't relying on luck. They had very little luck in the first half, but just power and passion and skill from the French took them out of the game. Eddie O'Sullivan, there he is. Yes, the damage was done, Simon, in that first 40 minutes, 27 nil at half time. Even though they outscored them, the Irish in the second half, three tries to one. It was all over at half time. Surprisingly, the French team, the wobbles in the second half, but it got them through. Gutsy performance by Keith Wood on the Irish lads. Yes, yeah, 21 to 16. They outscored them in the second half, but in the end, that 27 to 0 scoreline at half time saw France run out winners 43 21. And the Irish team in a huddle in the centre of the ground, no doubt. Eddie O'Sullivan reminding them of the good things they did in 2003. Great solidarity, they've enjoyed a terrific rugby season this year. Now, look at the hunks and cuddles, they know they're on their way back to Dublin tomorrow. For the French, well, they go on. <laughs>